I'm Sarah and I'll be discussing volume conduction, why it's a problem for EEG measurement, how it affects EEG measurements and specific tissues that will affect um, the voltage measurements at the surface of the brain. Basically, volume conduction is um, an electric current passing through biological matter from a source to a sensor. So in this case, we've got um, action potentials at unmyelinated neurons here on the surface of the brain. This is what that represents, going towards EEG scalp electrodes, which are then transmitted to a recording device. So uh, the biological matter that it travels through is the, the grey matter of the brain here. This is cerebrospinal fluid. This represents skin and the skull. The problem with volume conduction is that the voltage at the skin surface here is much, much smaller than the membrane potential due to it having to travel through all of this tissue which will have its own resistances and impedances which greatly reduce the amplitude at the skin surface. Um, different tissues have different conductivities, different impedances. Um, this makes the signal um, different along the surface. There may be a gradient, there may be no certain pattern to um, how the signal is affected. So it's hard to sort of have a reference point as to what the measurement should be. This represents um, the brain here, and these are all scalp electrodes, which they may be placed in this sort of arrangement. This is an example 2D EEG trace of um, delta waves, um, the waves that people show when they're asleep. Um, also, the problem with volume conduction is that you have an inverse modelling problem. During an EEG, you get this 2D signal from what is essentially a 3D sort of sphere, if that's how you want to model it. And it's hard to go work backwards and find out where the signal's coming from exactly because um, some of the currents produced at the surface of the, the brain itself um, will have a potential associated with them that will cancel out, which is why it's hard to localise uh, a potential or you know a dipole that could have produced any of these currents here. Measurements at the skin surface are much smaller than at the membrane potential. Um, they're very small at the skin surface, they're about 50 microvolts, whereas at the membrane they're usually between minus 50 to minus 100 millivolts. So it's a lot smaller. Again, you've got the resistive effects of the various tissues in between, which may be homogenous, and this all contributes to amplitude reduction at the skin surface. You've also got signals that will fluctuate 50 times a second, which in itself is hard to measure, but this isn't as much of a problem because EEG has a high temporal resolution. The skin surface will also pick up charge from the atmosphere which blurs the EEG and gives you a low signal to noise ratio which is also hard to interpret. Um, mathematically looking at this if you've got a brain here and it's producing a charge and obviously a measured potential is um, say measured here at a distance r so if you get a more realistic diagram here for modeling the brain as a sphere. So this white part here is the brain, this gray area here is cerebrospinal fluid, and this brown bit represents again the skull and the skin. An equation that ties this all together is that the potential V is equal to the charge Q produced at the neuron site in the brain, all divided by 4 pi e naught, which is um, just a constant, the permittivity of free space, and the distance r.
you can see here that potential is inversely proportional to the distance between the source and measurement. So if we're dealing with really small potentials to begin with, a couple of centimetres separation of, between measurement and source is relatively a lot when you're dealing with really small numbers and it just means that the amplitude is going to be reduced significantly because of the distance you have to measure the electrical current at. Specific tissues that greatly reduce the amplitude of these voltage measurements are the skin, which is especially resistive when dry, and the skull, which blurs the EEG 